This is one foot, two foot, where my toe is on this back toe. That's two feet away from that mulberry tree. I want to give these mulberries a little space around them. We'll be building up a bed around them too. Outside of the planting box. Alright. Now, I transplanted that flood turf roots up. Here the rest of them. We're causing two layers to come together. See, this is the green vegetative ground cover layer here sunlight, getting oxygen, getting CO2, getting water, doing its thing, being alive, making flowers. And I take the same thing and we put these two smushed together like so. Now these plants on the top have their roots exposed to the sun here and these ones are getting smothered out down here. They're both going to die. It's going to bring in the earthworms. There's already a bunch of earthworms in this grassroots area to begin with so they don't have to come from very far. I'm just creating a feast for them down here. This is where a lot of manure comes from. Earthworms. We feed the worms. That's what I've been doing for the past two years with the wood chips. I've been feeding the night crawlers. These are more of the regular earthworms, the night crawlers that are out here in the regular garden area now. So we're intensifying those in this bed with lots of food for them and then we'll use these walkways that are cre we're creating by stripping the sod off as a foundation area to build new soil. And I'll show you how that works. All right. Two years ago, I put down cardboard in some places, contractor's paper in other places. I ran a, had a cardboard. We had a hoard of cardboard. Used that all up. We had a hoard of newspaper. Used that all up. Started laying down contractor's paper just so I'd have. There we go. A tiny fragment of probably cardboard there. Just we'd have something to lay down to suppress the weeds and to get this started. So it's two years worth of organic matter accumulation. This is what we made right here over the course of two years. And this is just really fantastic stuff. So now we're mining it. All right, we're mining it from the walkway area where we would be stomping on it anyway. We're putting it down here, so we're doubling the level of fertility in this area here. This is going to be a planting bed. Well, I am in the midst of uh, clearing the turf out of this walkway area. Take note to talk about water. See, what has enabled all this biological activity to occur over the past two years for me, what looks like about three inches worth of soil, maybe two. I'm going to say two inches over the course of two years, so an inch a year from this area, from this method. Wood chips, and then you let stuff grow into it. Okay. All right, once we use the manuring fork here to strip that layer of sod off the top there to create the space for our walkways and turn that over into our planting areas here. We'll go ahead and take the shovel and we begin digging a trench for the water to go into. 
Now what will happen with this trench is as the water as the water falls, as the rain falls, it will flow until it gets to the trench, it'll come down into the trench, and from there it can stay on the property until it can saturate into the soil around it. I'm digging my trench shovel width about 8 inches and 16 inches deep and that means that for every every foot of trench I have got one cubic foot of water capture in ground. Now I know not all soils are created equal. Here we've got fairly decent soil, I don't know if you can see that well, put it into light, fairly decent soil down to about 16 inches. There's some organic matter, it's not the best, but it's at least amendable. If you do not have decent soil, where you happen to be, to a depth of 16 inches, it's okay. Instead of making your trench 8 inches across and 16 inches deep, go down to the depth of your soil and then multiply the width, however much you need. create one cubic foot per linear foot of trench. So if you've got decent soil down to say eight inches or so, make your trench twice as wide, 16 inches wide. If you've only got four inches of topsoil, then make your trench 32 inches wide. I know a fellow down in Texas that has just two inches of topsoil. He would need to make his pathways 48 inches wide. In all likelihood, he probably needs to spend a couple extra years building turf before beginning this particular method. So he would need about four years before he gets started. But even with soil that horrible, and on top of rock, no less, he can also set up his gardens just like this. And we're starting to hit some, uh, start hit, hitting a little bit of clay right there. And I know right underneath the clay, I'm going to go into sand. So we're going to call it right there, about 16 inches at this point. That's the depth of, uh, that's the depth of one of these concrete paper blocks, you see. All right, now we just take that soil that we've pulled out of the trench. And we'll put it on top of the turf that we've inverted in the planting area. Just like so. Now we'll use a rake to level it out. We want to get it to about, oh, say two or three inches on the top of the planting area. That should be fine right there. About two or three inches, which gives us an entire increase in elevation to about six inches above grade. Well, we had some rain last night, and today it's raining off and on, and uh, this is causing the ground to get a bit soft. As a matter of fact, if you look down here, you'll see that uh, here at the corner we stepped there, and it made the ground sort of crack and crumble around it. And this is a real danger when the trenches are open like this, and so tumble down into the trench and if that happens then we lose the advantage of having a, a channel to trap and hold water in because it'll be from the soil. So we need to get the wood chips put in here as quickly as possible to prevent that from happening. Very carefully to get these chips to go in. Right. Chips in, spread them out a bit. This is where I put the 
Chiefs last time. I'm sorry I didn't get that on camera. Uh, it was really windy the other day and I couldn't get any audio at all. So I just get those and you can walk on them too. The idea is get this inside of the trench reinforced with the pressure from the wood chips, pushing it against the walls so we don't have any crumbling incidents like that. that. Take a minute to explain these to you real quick. All right, so what I have here is a three foot long section of lateral line. We cut it off three, three foot long. It already has the holes perforated into it, so I didn't have to drill those. This is about a three inch thick piece of PVC pipe. And all we need to do with it is get it down there to the bottom of the trench. Even though we got this in the bottom of the trench, you'll notice that those, those perforations are here. This allows air to come in from the top all the way down to the bottom there. So, with the decomposition process, we're just going to pack the wood chips around it. Now this is a three foot section pipe. And at the moment it doesn't go all the way down. But remember, we're going to come back next year or the year after, after these wood chips have broken down a bit. And we'll dig out again and turn the fresh compost onto the top of the soil here and increase the height of the bed so the little point will come to about there and then the next year we'll get it up to probably around there so we're about about two more years away from having the soil level come up to about here and this will be right close to the top so we'll have three foot a three foot column of wood chips with air circulation to accelerate decomposition uh, this is based on an idea developed by a couple of researchers named Johnson and Sue. So if you wanted to look up Johnson Sue bioreactors, this is using a, a similar concept to accelerate the decomposition of these wood chips and turn them into compost.
I'd like to thank you all for clicking on and watching this video. Hopefully you found something in here that's informative or entertaining. And if you did, well you know what to do. I'll catch you.